Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here at DocSports.com and welcome to the update for Tuesday, September 24th, 2019. Free pick coming up in just a moment. Big football video every Tuesday here as uh, we recap what happened in this previous week in the NFL. What was week three? We'll get to that. We'll get to the free pick all in a moment. First quick note, if you have yet to take advantage of the offer going on right now, the discounted offer in football for the rest of the season, go check it out. It is 33% off the rest of the football season. That includes college football and the NFL. Don't miss out. Again, I'll give you the example of how to go there if you haven't watched these videos over the last couple of days. You simply go over to the DocSports.com website, you click on my Handicappers homepage, and you click on the rest of the season, full season package, college football, and the NFL. And when you do that, box will pop up. It's going to ask you for the code word, and that code is FB Season 33. All one word, FB Season 33. 33% off the rest of the football season. Again, that includes college football it includes the nfl rest of the season and go grab it because uh, this will not be available for a long time from what we're being told by the docsports.com brass so it's 33 percent off the rest of the season what a great time to do it i've mentioned how much i like weeks three and beyond in college football and the nfl normally and uh, we did the same last year we ended up number one in college football and the nfl combined after a slow first couple of weeks this year slow first couple of weeks but uh, uh, we capped off a nice winning football weekend with the Chicago Bears last night. Uh, three and one Sunday, Monday NFL. And here's what we did uh, over this past weekend. Saturday, Sunday, Monday combined. 22.6 units of profit. Once again, on a hot streak, college football, NFL, we got all the numbers compiled now, all the stats, all that good stuff for the first couple of weeks. And, and again, uh, it started and we've had profits unit-wise the last two weeks in college football, two of three weeks in the NFL. Don't miss out on this week's college football. Got a huge play going this weekend. More on that uh, when we get to Thursday's video. That's, of course, the day of the week we post our football at DocSports.com every Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, college football, NFL, CFL. We post it all on Thursday afternoons. And again, you don't want to miss out. I'll tell you more about that on Thursday's video. But Red Hot uh, going into this week in all sports, up 22.6 units Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Tuesday, we've got two plays. I've got Major League Baseball premium play aside uh, that we feel has a ton of value on it. That'll be available at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific at DocSports.com. I uh, wanted to mention also we are 60% winning tickets in the entire month of September in Major League Baseball. Yesterday I pushed. Uh, we had the first five innings under five runs between the Phillies and the Nats. Nats scored two in the bottom half, half excuse me, in the bottom half of the fifth and uh, forced us to take a push, but a push better than a loss, obviously. Now here on the free pick, we unfortunately lost uh, with the underdog Arizona Diamondbacks. We'll look to get right back in the win column with the free pick in just a moment. But again, we got baseball, which will be posted at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time on Tuesday. WNBA playoffs are back in action. They were off yesterday on Monday. We go into Tuesday's card, 17-8 and eight with the last 25 WNBA plays. And going back a couple of months now, 43-23 and 2 against the spread in the WNBA. My WNBA play for Tuesday's playoff action will be available at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, DocSports.com. All right, as you can tell, red hot. Let's keep it going. Plus 22.6 units last three days. Let's keep it going on Tuesday. And we'll get to the free pick, by the way, in just one moment. But it is NFL Recap Tuesday for us on these videos. So, of course, these videos are a little bit longer uh, than most of our videos. Mondays and Tuesdays usually pretty long, 10 to 14, 15 minutes. Rest of the week, daily, about five to seven minutes. So let's get to it. Recap from week three in the NFL in no particular order. We just uh, going to read these to you as we jot the notes down while we're watching the games and grabbing information off of the net and other locales. So let's get to it. Colts beat the Falcons 27-24. Matty Ryan threw seven picks last year. He's already got six in three games this season. He had a tremendous second half the other day. 
22 for 23, 216 yards, three touchdowns, no picks in the second half. Matty Ice for the Falcons. Uh, Freeman ran 88 yards, 16 carries. Julio Jones, 128 yards, eight receptions and a touchdown. If I told you those stats and you didn't know that final score, you would think the Atlanta Falcons won that game. Uh, but their defense, man, they missed tackles. They took bad angles. I'm not so sure Dan Quinn is going to be real happy with himself for firing his defensive coordinator and taking over the play calling on defense because it's not been good, especially this past weekend. Uh, as far as Jacoby Brissett, again, doing well. 28 for 37, 310 yards and two touchdowns. Marlon Mack with a nice game running the football. T.Y. Hilton, eight grabs. Again, the Colts won 27-24. The Buffalo Bills knock off Cincy 21-17. Game-winning touchdown for Buffalo with less than two minutes to go. And of course, Andy Dalton, he got picked off on that tipped pass as they were driving to potentially score the game-winning touchdown in the closing minute. They were picked off inside uh, the Buffalo Bills 20-yard line. But how about this? In the first nine possessions for Cincinnati, they had six punts and three turnovers and still came within about 15 or 20 yards from winning that football game. A uh, nice day for Josh Allen for the most part. Uh, Bengals have been outrushed 506 to 126 so far this season. They got outrushed by 108 yards by Buffalo. When you match up the Bengals against good running football teams, it makes it tough to pull the trigger on Cincy. And I think that's one of the most important stats of the week from week three. Again, the Bengals outrushed 506 to 126 on the season. You saw what happened with the Patriots being that huge favorite. They jump out to a big lead. They don't hang on as far as the spread was concerned. Patriots pick up the win 30 to 14, 18 straight home wins for the Patriots and a very rare uh, home loss as far as the spread was concerned. Brady had a decent game, 28 for 42, 306, couple of the touchdowns. Gordon and Edelman, 13 combined grabs, 145 yards. Uh, listen, Luke Falk gets thrown into the mix. He goes 12 for 22, 98 yards, uh, one interception. Le'Veon Bell was held to less than two yards per carry. It's just a bad situation right now with the New York Jets. Their offense has one touchdown in three games thus far. Patriots not giving up touchdowns either, but listen, two of the three games have come against the Dolphins and the Jets, so things will start getting a little bit tougher uh, for the New England Patriots. Uh, as we you know get into week four and beyond broncos lose to the packers 27 to 16 that offensive line for the pack has been tremendous they're keeping aaron Rodgers clean no doubt about it uh, he can really play without feeling like he's got to do everything for this offense right now uh, denver of course we expected their defense everybody did to be doing better than they are when vic fangio was named as coach they don't have a sack or a turnover yet uh, they committed three turnovers themselves in the game they did outrush green bay 140 49 to 77. Something to keep an eye on as Green Bay progresses throughout the season, how they're going to do against the run with their defense. Panthers, our top play this past Sunday, six star play. Uh, they walk over the Cardinals 38 to 20. Kyle Allen, second start in the NFL. He had one a couple of the seasons ago. He's 2 0 in his two starts, by the way. 19 for 26, 261 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. He averaged 10 yards per pass. Then there's Kyler Murray, his old teammate from Texas AM. Playing for the Cardinals. He throws 43 passes and averages only 4.02 yards per pass. That's their offense that they're running. Uh, it's a lot of short little dump offs, short stuff over the middle, crap like that, trying to turn short passes into big yards after catch. Uh, but again, just four yards per pass, 43 passes thrown. Kyler Murray has now thrown 137 passes in three games. It ain't going to work. It ain't working right now. Uh, Christian Kirk, how about this? Telling stat leads the team with 10 receptions on Sunday, but only 59 yards receiving. Crazy. Christian McCaffrey, we mentioned in our write-up on the Carolina game that with a deep passing threat, finally at quarterback, he would probably go off. He did. 24 carries, 153 yards. Olsen and Samuel each had seven receptions, and the Panthers sacked Murray eight times. Giants over the Buccaneers, 32-31. to 31. Daniel Jones, as we saw, more mobile uh, than Eli Manning. Couple of the touchdown rushes in that game. That's the funny thing. He had, what well, he ran to the perimeter for one touchdown. He ran right through the middle of a, with a, with a C parted on defense for about a 15-yard touchdown run or so later in the game. 
220 plus starts for Eli Manning. He had seven rushing touchdowns. We saw two out of Daniel Jones in his very first start alone. Uh, the Bucs did miss a 30-yard field goal about that, which would have won the game. Uh, Jones in the first half was okay, 12 for 19, 123 yards. Second half, 11 for 17, 213 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. But listen to this, Tampa outgained the Giants 499 to 384. They had 144 yards on 32 carries. I don't know, man. I'm, you know, Saquon Barkley's out this week. I'm not so sure that the Giants aren't a little bit overvalued now that they got the win over Tampa Bay. They were actually outgained by 115 yards in the contest. Dolphins lose to the Cowboys 31-6. If you had the guts to lay the big points, you covered with Dallas. 21-0 second half after a close first half, 10-6. At halftime, Miami had a chance to make a field goal towards the end of the first half, cut it to one point. Uh, that did not go through the uprights. 476 on more than seven yards per play for Dallas. 283 yards for Miami. Dallas ran for 235 yards on 34 carries. What else can you say, man? 6.9 yards per carry to three yards per carry for the hapless Dolphins. Lions over the Eagles 27-24. Philly was just a shell of them former selves uh, as far as the receiving core was concerned. No Deshaun Jackson. Everybody knew we knew about that on Friday, but then it was announced early Sunday morning. No Alshon Jeffrey uh, and they just didn't have it. So anyway, they had the drop pass inside the Lions three yard line on fourth and 15 with seconds to go in the game. If you got Jeffrey or Jackson out there, they probably make that catch and go on to get the victory. Uh, they beat themselves to a certain extent. They blocked a Detroit field goal attempt in the final two minutes. They returned the block inside the Detroit 30. It's called back to midfield for a penalty that was a little questionable. Uh, not so sure it should have been called, but a minus two turnover ratio for Philly in the game. They outgained Detroit by 86 yards, and they ran for 127 yards on 30 carries. I bring that up because Detroit's run defense is getting shredded game after game. I don't know how long this team's going to be on on a, 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 a non-losing uh, record, I should say, uh, if I could spit it out in English, but they're 2-0-1. I just don't see this team continuing to win football games when you're giving up that much on the ground to your opposition. Texans over the Chargers, 27-20. Houston, almost seven yards per play to just over five for the Chargers. Uh, just 39 rushing yards, though, for Houston, two yards per carry. Deshaun Watson, real nice game. Rivers, not a bad game. Keenan Allen had a huge game, 13 receptions, 183 yards, two touchdowns, but Houston outscored the Chargers 20-3 to in a big second half. Defense played extremely well over the final two quarters. Saw so what happened with KC and Baltimore. Looked like KC was going to get the easy cover. Uh, they were up 30-13 to at one point in the second half. Only won by 5, 33-28. What the heck was Baltimore doing? It going for two over and over in that game made no sense. Two 50-50 balls also by Baltimore got the cover if you had the Ravens. I mean, listen, Lamar Jackson backpedaled, didn't he? Great first couple of weeks, goes up against KC. He goes, what, 20, uh, 23 for 42, I believe it was, on Sunday. Not only that, he had two passes that he just threw up in the air when he was under a rush. And both times inside the KC 20, a 50-50 jump ball was caught by one of his receivers. Could have easily been picked off. His exact number is 22 for 43, 267 yards. No interceptions, but also no touchdowns. Big game running the football for Ingram. Also, Darnell Williams and LaShawn McCoy for KC. They combined for 17 carries, 116 yards. Steelers go into San Francisco. We had the Steelers. They covered for us, but the Niners got the win 24-20. to Misleading final score, probably, if you look at the stats because, listen, the Niners out first down Pittsburgh 26-11. to Outgained them 436-239. to They ran 168 yards on 40 carries. Garoppolo, his problem, again, picks. He threw two interceptions to just one touchdown, but Mostert and Breida, the two running backs for the Niners, 26 carries combined, 147 yards. Yards. Mesa Rudolph only 14 for 2774 yards. Couple of touchdowns, only one pick, but no ground game at all for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They had five turnovers in the game, did San Francisco to Pittsburgh's two. And listen, we had Pittsburgh. It wasn't our big play, but it was a play. Sometimes you get fortunate. In that situation, I did with a plus three turnover ratio uh, getting the cover. Saints get the uh, beat the Seahawks 33 to 27 in Seattle. Uh, Saints led by 20. 
uh, through three quarters. They were up 27 to seven. Their defense, their special teams helped build that lead. Uh, check out these numbers. Seattle outgained New Orleans 515 to 265. <laughs> By 250 yards, they outgained them. Alvin Kamara had a big game, 16 carries, nine receptions, 162 combined yards, two touchdowns. Tyler Lockett, man, he was tear. Oh, the Saints could not cover him. He tore it up for Seattle, 11 grabs, 154 yards. Saints with a defensive touchdown actually proved to be the difference in the game, but uh, you don't normally get out gained 515 to 265 and come away with a six point road victory, but they did. Rams over the Browns, 20 to 13 Sunday night football. Browns only 200. 70 total yards, four yards per play, about 4.3 yards per play to be exact. Uh, Nick Chubb was okay, but Baker Mayfield struggling. He was 18 for 36, a touchdown and a pick. Offensive line is not playing well at all. Uh, the Browns play calling on top of that left a lot to be desired, including that fourth and nine draw that they ran between the tackles at the uh, Rams 40 yard line at a key moment of the game and gained what, one or two yards? Turn the ball over, ridiculous. Uh, Gurley only had 43 yards on 14 carries, so the Browns defense didn't play badly. They did get burned by Cooks and Cup. They had a real nice game combined at wide receiver for the Rams. But Jared Goff, he goes 24 for 38, 269, two touchdowns, two picks. His last four games, Three games this year for Jared Goff, plus the Super Bowl. He's only a 59% passer, 85 for 143. Four touchdowns and four interceptions. That's what Jared Goff's done in the last four games. You would think at some point it catches up to this football team. And finally, last night, Monday Night Football, we capped off our weekend with a win on the Bears. Uh, Trubisky did it again. Starts out great. First quarter and a half, first two quarters. Teams make adjustments. He doesn't over the course of the final two quarters, and things got a little bit funny and a little bit tight. Uh, they adjust he ends up going it looks good he goes what 25 for 31 231 yards three touchdowns at a pick but it wasn't that impressive in the second half with what he was doing and of course when they had a chance to go up 35 to 9 and absolutely salt things away they're inside the 10 yard line he throws that interception horrible pass at the goal line and next thing you know it's 28 to 15 Chicago and you've got the skins driving the football thank goodness for those like us who have the Bears uh, that Case Keenum is not too hot and fumbled the ball at the Bears 15 yard line. They go for two after they score a touchdown if they would have there. It's all of a sudden 28 to 23. So that turnover at the Bears 15 saved our bacon. They dominated for two and a half quarters and almost blew it anyway as far as the cover was concerned. Uh, anyway, Skins committed five turnovers and I believe that was 21 Chicago Bears points, what it led to. So hey, we'll take the turnovers anytime we can get them. So hey, listen, that's the recap for Tuesday. We'll do that every single Tuesday throughout the NFL season. You already know about Mondays when we do our opening line report, Sunday nights, Mondays in college football. Rest of the week, like Wednesday's video, Thursday's video, Friday, Saturday, much shorter videos. You won't have to keep sitting here watching uh, for 10 or 15 minutes or whatever. Uh, but anyway, that's it for the recap. Let's get to the free pick for Tuesday. Again, real quick note, baseball available 11.30 a.m. Eastern over at DocSports.com. One play on Tuesday, 60% winning tickets in baseball this month of September. Go grab that. 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific is when I post my WNBA. We do have a play in Tuesday night WNBA action between the Mystics and the Aces. And again, we're 43-23-2 with our last 68 in the WNBA. All right, let's head to Major League Baseball free pick. We lost with the D-backs last night. Let's get right back in the win column. Suggesting under 8.5 between the Brewers and the Reds in this one. I'm not too sure Milwaukee has what it takes to get after Sonny Gray. And I know they've been hot, but again, it is Sonny Gray. They're 0-4 against that right-hander this season, 0-5 lifetime. He shut him down in those five starts with a 178 ERA. Sonny Gray has been flying under the radar to a lot of people who are general baseball fans. Last 14 starts, going all the way back to July 3rd, Sonny Gray has a 174 ERA, a 094 whip, 108 strikeouts in 88 innings pitched. That's a strikeout to innings pitch ratio of 11 to 9 innings. Crazy stuff. The Unders on a 6-2 run in Adrian Hauser's last eight starts. The Unders 10-3-2 in Cincinnati's last 15 home games. And the Unders on a 7-1 
one run where these two teams hook up. I think we got another under. Uh, I think the majority of the runs are going to be scored by Cincy. I think we'll probably see four runs out of Cincy, one or two out of Milwaukee by the time it's done. So our recommendation is under eight and a half between the Brewers and the Reds in this matchup between Hauser and Sonny Gray. All right, that's going to do it for us for Tuesday. Thanks for sticking around and watching these videos each and every day. If you like the videos, click on that thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe. I'm Scott Sprites with DocSports.com. Put Tuesday in the win column right back here Friday, 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific. Not Friday, Wednesday. Holy cow, I'm getting ahead of myself. Wednesday, 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific.